I'll start with you. I mean, good grief. Surely they just have to tell us the truth on this, don't they? How many of these people are actually you know, sex offenders or violent thugs? I think viewers will be very shocked by that, that you've actually asked the Minister of Justice, do they not have a search function on a computer? We pay them enough money, don't we? So they should be able to say how many asylum seekers. And as you say, Patrick, anecdotally, we know in areas where they've sent a lot of asylum seekers, you know, I hear about this all the time, young girls being followed home from school and so on. But, but it is catastrophic. And this week, on Monday, when Rishi Sunak was giving his Stop the Boat speech, the government slipped out the fact that this early, but this early part of this year, 24% increase in illegal migrants coming across the channel. And something that caught my eye, which I think people will be very interested in, is that the number of official asylum decisions, 129,000 from April 2023 to 2024, uh, the substantial, substantive decisions, 56,744 grants, 36,000 refusals. That is a grant rate of 61%. Do you know what the grant rate is in France? No. 23%. The British grant rate is three times what it is, and I am hearing from senior people that the government is rushing through mm. approval of asylum claims, undocumented male migrants like that man who killed Mr Terence Carney on his morning walk. Terence Carney, age 70, so sorry to his family. And these people being let into our country in vast numbers, mm. unchecked, to spare the government embarrassment, Patrick, mm. to get them off the books before the general election. That's what's going on in Ireland. I don't feel sorry for Ireland at all. Ireland refused to have border oh. infrastructure because of Brexit to be spiteful. And now they've got lots of migrants coming across. Tough. Well, well there you go. I mean, I mean yeah, Ireland, I, I just don't think they're going to stand for this. I, I just wonder how much more the British public will actually take. Well, indeed. I mean, look, the bottom line here is that these are unvetted, we don't know who these people are, where they, well, we know where they're coming from, but we don't know who they are, and we, d we simply don't know of their criminal backgrounds or what backgrounds they do have. But the bigger thing here is that the vast majority of these are not actually genuine asylum seekers, they're not genuine refugees. Mm. As is the case, I mean, look, let's be honest, I stood for Parliament in Northern Ireland in 15, and to travel from uh, Great Britain to Northern Ireland, you need to show a photo ID. OK, now, if these are people who have already gained asylum, thanks to the great blob that is the Home Office in the UK, and they're travelling over to the Republic of mm. Ireland, which has a very free and open uh, border with, with, with Northern Ireland, it means that um, they're not asylum seekers, because if they were, they'd be staying here. But they're going into the Republic for economic opportunities. Which might there be, might there not They're be. They're allowed to work. They, they, they are, my understanding anyway, and doing a bit of research before the show, was that they are more able to work whilst there is a pending asylum decision in the Republic of Ireland than they are here. Um, and so you can see maybe why they would do that, and also possibly the fear of Rwanda as well. But Matthew, I, I just think this is another example of, of the, the real figure of UK asylum seekers being disguised. If, if it is the case, really, that 80% of the Republic of Ireland's really quite high caseload of asylum seekers now have managed to come from the UK into the Republic, I mean, good grief, that just shows how many more we've got than we thought. Yeah, I mean, apparently it is absolutely 80% um, because people turn up at one office in Dublin um, to register it, and it is literally eight out of ten people have said they've come from Northern Ireland and they've got some evidence they've come from Northern Ireland, you know, like a train ticket. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, these, these are clearly people who've arrived across the channel um, because, and so it just shows that this an even bigger farce than we thought and it's an even bigger failure of the government and it's why you know I know you're going to groan when I say it but it is why we need to focus on sma on, to, on doing two things on smashing the gangs so that we can uh, uh, reduce the number of people coming but also when people come to processing them so that the turnaround is you know uh, is days mm. and weeks and not months and years when people are getting lost in the these system. These figures show they are processing them at great speed. Well they're just and now not, stamping and, stay and, aren't and they? they're rubber stamping yeah. them in that is not a, a safe a Asylum policy. Well, no, that, that, what I mean is we need to, a system where people aren't languishing for years and then the file is lost and the people get to stay by default, but where the decisions are taken quickly within a system that works, which is what happens in other countries. Well, indeed, and I think that's, again, uh, the failure of even the Rwanda scheme, I'm sorry to say. I think the only way forward is to deter and stop this uh, very wrongful uh, channel crossings is simply... We're picking them up anyway. We go and drop them back on the French coast. The French are coming into our waters. 
well, as we saw two days ago. Well, we've got a, I've got a story a bit later on, which I know will, will massively concern people, which is about the possibility of the French actually uh, uh, absconding from those beaches I mean, in the, com the, in the coming we'll months. We've been taken for a ride by the French, and yeah. we need to stop that. We need to have a proper deal with the French, which is what the last Labour government did to close the Sangat camp, which is the sort of noughties equivalent of what's happening at the moment. Uh, just, just a final word to you on this. I, I, I mean, how many more cases is there going to be of people who have killed people or sexually assaulted people, etc. Do you think before there is more mass outrage in Britain, I'm not calling for people to say this, I'm not, you know, I don't want anyone to clip this and say I'm inciting violence, I'm not saying that, but you look at what's going on in Ireland yeah. and other countries as well, where they are, they are more ready to take action in, in that sense. So how long is that before it happens here, do you think? I think it can happen any day, any week. I mean, literally, I interviewed Suella Braverman this week, former Home Secretary, and she said we are suffering a national security emergency. Mm. That's how bad it is. And Ireland, of course, under the very liberal Leo Varadkar, welcoming everybody from the EU freedom of movement. Ireland is now a tinderbox, and we will have areas in this country where gradually people realise that their daughters particularly are not safe. Yeah.